If you work in any of these industries, you probably need to visualize data often. So in this video, I'm going to show you five awesome Excel visuals to impress your manager. And this has taken me years to learn, but they're actually surprisingly easy to make if you learn them correctly. Let's take a look at level one. Here we have a waffle chart, which allows you to show the capacity of a certain item or place with this cool square visual that's dynamic. For example, let's suppose our manager wants us to show that there's only 25 people in attendance out of the 100 that are available. So for this, we first need to show all of the data. In this case, we'll use the equals sequence formula. Hit the tab key and there's 100 available. That means that it's 10 in columns and 10 in rows. We can close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now we have all those values, but they should be in reverse order. So we're actually gonna go back inside and add a sort as well. Hit the tab key there and at the very end, we're gonna put a comma and another comma for the sort order. We want it in descending. So that's a minus one. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. That should now go all the way to 100 and to make this a bit more like a square what we're gonna do is change the size of these columns by going to right click and column width here we can change it to around 2.2 and hit enter now it's looking more like a square and we should change the background color and the font color as well so let's say for the background we want to go with a light gray like so and we're gonna match the font color as well like that we can also add white borders. So we'll go for a line color that's white. We'll also make that line style a bit thicker like this one down here. And we want all of the borders. So we'll select that and you can see what that looks like over here. Now that we have the background, we need to show that 25 people are going to be attending out of these 100 squares. So we'll select the whole area. And from here, we'll go to conditional formatting and we're gonna create a new rule. This rule is going to be for formatting only cells that contain and it's going to be cells that contain the values between zero and the attendance. So that's going to be the ones that should be filled in a certain color. So we'll go over here to the format area and we'll change that to a dark blue and the same thing goes with the font that should have the exact same color. So it's this one over here. Click on OK. OK again. And now you can see what that looks like. And when I change this from a 25 to a 55, you can see how this is fully dynamic. Now that this is taking shape, it would be nice to also add a text box that shows the exact attendance number in the center. So we can go to insert and select a text box all the way to the right. Just gonna put it right around here in the center. And to link it, we're gonna go to the formula bar, put an equal sign and link it to the attendance itself. So it's 55 now, and now we just need to make it bigger and center it. So I'll fast forward that. We can also get rid of the background under shape format. We're going for no fill and we're also going for no outline. And you can see what that looks like. If I change this to 40, it's gonna update like so. Next up in level two, we have a line chart with markers. For this, using this data set, suppose our manager wants us to emphasize that the increase in market share from 2020 on is thanks to the new flavor that we've released. And by the way, if you want to download this Excel file for free, head over to the link in the description below so you can follow along, which I highly recommend if you want to learn these concepts properly. First, we'll select the area with Control A, head over to Insert, and we'll go for the recommended line chart like this one over here. That's looking good as a start. We can get rid of the title just for the time being, and we want to add some markers. So we'll go over here, right click, and format data series. Under this bucket over here, we want to add a marker that's going to be a solid. So we're gonna go to build in and we can change this to let's say a circle and increase the size to something like a seven. We can change the color of it to let's say a white color so it stands out a lot more. And if we want to emphasize the time periods from 2020 to 2024, we can change the colors of these individually let's say to an orange for instance. So let me fast forward that. Here we go and these lines are currently looking quite sharp. So what we can do is go all the way down. So scroll down to where it says smooth line. That's what we wanna tick on and you can see the difference there. It makes the line a lot smoother. Then we want to add some kind of a message on this side and for this we'll first get rid of all of the grid lines and we'll change the fill color in the back to no fill 
and no border as well. Now what we're gonna do is insert a light gray shape and add a message inside of it. So we'll go to insert shapes and we'll go for a light gray one like this and let me just put it roughly around here. We're gonna change the fill color to a light gray and let's go with no outline like so. And now we need to add some kind of text box inside of it. So we'll add a text box. Let's say we put it right around here and I'm gonna type a message quickly. So I say there's a new favor release and I can remove the fill color and also the line. And you can see what that looks like. Obviously we can't see the chart right now, which is problematic. So we'll select that and bring it to the front by right clicking and bring to front. Now you can see what that looks like. All right, now moving halfway to level three and here we have what's known as a radar chart. Here's the data we have that has some customer satisfaction scores. And you might think of using a pie chart, but obviously these percentages are independent, so they're not going to add up to 100. We could use a column chart, but I think a better alternative is a radar chart. So we'll select the whole area with Control A, head to insert, and in this drop down over here, we can go all the way down and select a radar chart right here. Let's say we go for one with markers. You can see what that looks like initially. I would say we don't really need these headers as we'll add some labels ourselves. Same thing with these ones, we'll just add it all under the markers. So right click and add data labels. Right now we've added the percentages, but we also want to show the metrics themselves too. So right click and go to format data labels. Here we can select value from cells and select the different metrics that we have available. Hit enter there and now we can see the breakdown of each. That said, it's not very visible right now because the background of each is transparent. So we can change that by going to the bucket under label options and we'll go for a solid fill that can be in a different color. Let's suppose we go for a light blue like that. You can see what that looks like. I can press Ctrl B to bolden as well. And that's the idea with this radar chart. And as you can see, it seems like we're lacking probably quite a bit in hygiene and quality, but we're actually doing very well in these other metrics. Before we move up to level four, there's actually a more powerful data visualization tool than Excel, which is called Power BI, and it's currently in demand. So if you want to learn it, you can check out our Power BI for business analytics course. In our all-inclusive curriculum, we start with data cleaning and transformation using Power Query. Then we get into data visualization tools, followed by DAX or data analysis expressions, which is what you would use to build formulas in Power BI. Then to simulate real work scenarios, we'll practice using two case studies. One will focus on building a PNL dashboard from scratch on Nike, while the other will focus on visualizing McDonald's European restaurant operations. Currently, 97% of Fortune 500 companies use Power BI, so if you're looking to invest in yourself, head over to a link in the description below to get started. All right, back to the video. Next up in level four, we'll look at a variance chart, which is most useful to see the difference from month to month. Over here is the data that we've got, where we've got the year, the quantity sold versus next month. So we have in 2019, we have some 2020 data and so forth the variance percentage, so the difference in percentage terms, and the variance itself, so the absolute number. And we have it split into positive and negative as well. As you can see, the positives are also formatted as a negative. That's just because we'll need it this way for the chart. So we'll first select all of this area right here and head over to insert. What we want to insert, let's say we go under recommended charts, is a simple 2D clustered column. So that's what we'll select and hit on OK. With that, we can get rid of the title and the legend area. And essentially this orange line is the one that we want to get rid of. We can do that by going to format and under shape fill, we'll go for no fill and no outline as well. That's the first step. And from here, we'll go to right click, format data series. And you'll notice that we have this overlap and gap width. We want both of these to be zero. So zero and zero and hit enter. Now you can see that this looks a lot tighter and we can start to work on the difference. For that, we'll go to this plus sign that we have next to the chart 
and under error bars we want to go to more options. You'll notice that this generates this line, which is what we want, but under custom we need to specify the values. So we'll click on that and the positive error values are the ones that we have right here. Right now you can't quite see them, but they should go all the way to G9 and the negative ones should be on H. They should go all the way to H9. Hit enter there, enter again, and you can see what these lines look like. The next step would be to add the data labels for them. So we'll click on the transparent column, right click, add data labels. Right now we just get the quantity, but that's not quite what we want. So we'll actually go all the way to this icon, which is the column one, and change the value from cells. We'll select that. And this should just be the variance percentage. Hit OK there. Now you can see we have the variance percentage, but we don't want the quantity. So we'll untick on those like so. And we just have the percentages, press Ctrl B to bolden those. And we can change the position of specific ones, like this one over here, maybe I can just put to the inside end, and this other one as well, inside end. Now you can see what that looks like. We can reformat the colors simply by changing the font. In this case, you can see I've changed the colors manually. So when it's negative, I want it in red. And I've also added a light gray fill, so it stands out a bit more. And finally, in level 5, we have the most advanced chart yet, which is a dumbbell chart. This allows you to see the difference over time fairly well, especially when the number doesn't start at zero. For example, in this scenario, suppose we have the average age to own a house in 1980 to 2020. And by the way, these are just made up figures. So first, what we'll do is select only the 1980 figures and head to insert. We're going to go for a scatter. So it's going to be this one right here that works as the initial step. We'll then select the dots, right click and select data. Here we're going to edit this series one as we need to rename it and make some other changes. So it's the 1980. The X values are all of these values that we have right underneath. And then the Y values are going to be all of the different ranks that we've got. Hit OK ok there and now we need to add the 2020 values we can do that by adding a new legend it's a 2021 x values are all of these and the series y values are all of the ranks we'll hit ok there now click on ok again and you can see that this is starting to take shape let's get rid of these grid lines they don't really do too much so we'll get rid of them there that said right now this cutter doesn't look too great because it doesn't have the line in the middle to show the trajectory. For this, we'll click on the blue values, then we're gonna go to this plus sign again, and use the error bars that we actually saw earlier under more options. Here you can see we get a vertical and a horizontal one. We wanna get rid of the vertical just by deleting it, and this horizontal one we need to switch around a bit by going over to custom and specifying the value. Here under the positive, we're just going to select the difference like so and enter. Now you can see what that looks like. If you want to get rid of this left side where there's some excess line, just click on that plus and you can see that's looking way better. Let me change the axis here so that it doesn't start at zero, but maybe it starts at something like 18. Now we can see the differences better. That said, right now we don't quite see the countries. We can get rid of this rank as it doesn't really tell us much, but to add the countries in here, we can click on this blue dot, right click, add data labels. We only get the rank now, but we can change that around if you recall from level four. So we can select those and under this column over here, we're gonna go to value from cells. We want to select all of the different countries, hit on okay there. And now you can see we have the country, but we don't want to show the Y value. And we can also change the positioning so that the line is not literally inside of the country by clicking on left. I can bolden that for instance. And now you can see roughly what that looks like. And just like that, you've learned to make five awesome advanced Excel charts to impress your manager. And if you want to learn even more, like making the exact same charts as The Economist, check out this video over here or take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.